Hey, welcome back to the channel. I, I want to cover something really short and sweet today, and that's about learning how to control your mindset when you're grappling, okay? And this is because <clears throat> if I had a dollar for every DM that I have to answer about people complaining about now that they know how to take people down, they'll thank me and say, oh, I know how to, man, my wrestling's really improved, but now I take people down and I end up inside their guard. I think they're surprised when they hear my answer because it's really straightforward, which is learn how to pass the guard. And it's like, wait, what? Like, I shouldn't be in their guard. And it's like, well, yeah, because if they start conceding the takedown early, you're going to end up in their guard. Guard passing is an essential skill. If you're getting that error signal every time you take somebody down and you end up in their guard and your first response is, oh, man you're done. Like you'll never make it in the long haul for competition because you're constantly telling yourself negative things when you're trying to do something that you're supposed to enjoy. Okay. <laughs> like why else are you doing this? 99.9% .9 of people who are on this channel aren't like just working to be a world champion. Okay. And so at that point it is a job. Um, and, you know, it's not as fun. And I understand that. I can relate to that because when wrestling, like, was my job, like, particularly, like, in college, like, collegiate wrestling, it's sort of your job. If you're there on scholarship, that's what you're supposed to be there for, right? Um, I get the pressure of that. But you have to learn, and I learned this early on, that if when the position goes in a direction that you didn't intend, the last thing that you need to be doing is having that oh, thought. Because now you're bringing in negativity. And while your brain is there, you're not thinking about the things that you need to do. And at the highest, the higher the level gets, the less time that you have in order to react. So, for example, like in collegiate wrestling, if somebody took me down, the best way for me to get out is immediately. If I'm not moving immediately to get out and doing the proper things, where are his hands? I have to establish some hand control, right? And I don't just go grabbing hands like this and leaving this open because he'll just reach across and get a cross wrist, right? So I have to be like, I, I need to get out. I need to get this hand out. I need to start establishing some control over this hand, right? And I need to be thinking about uh, all the things that I need to do to get out. I'm not worried about what he's doing in terms of it hurting my feelings. Okay. I'm not worried about what he's doing. It's I'm thinking about it in terms of the, this is the game that I have to play. This is the position that I'm in. These are the things that I need to do to get out of there. So if you take down somebody and you up and end up in their full guard, the best thing to do is immediately start doing the things that you need to do to get out of their full guard. You stand up, right? Put the hands in the, in the armpits and start standing up. Oh, but now I'll go to my legs. So what? Now you're defending the legs, right? And if and, and believe me that he's going to pick up on this if he knows what he's doing well, or she. If every time they switch to another attack that you're showing signs of frustration, that's just building them up. You know, I saw that all the time in wrestling. It's harder to see it at higher levels, to break people, that is, right? Um, but when I felt somebody break, I could be on the verge of going to sleep, like passing out, being so tired, you know, because I'm working so hard. And if they showed any sign of, of breaking, then all of a sudden my energy level just went like super up because now I'm like, oh, well now you're not going to stop my pin attempts. You know, you're, you're just going to kind of give in, right. Or they're going to, they're going to have a harder time and you can tell, like you can feel that frustration. And so you, you have to just learn how to train your mind to not be a whiner, like inside. OK, you have to train your mind and not whine to yourself. You're complaining to yourself. Right. You take somebody down and you end up in their guard and go, oh, like, dude, OK, I'm in your guard. What do I do from the guard position? You know, now you get out of the guard. Now I need to be looking to pass. And it doesn't have to be frantic. It, you have to have good controlled technique. Right. I pass his guard. Now. Now, what am I going to do? Right. And sometimes in practice, what I'll do is I'll pass somebody's guard and I won't try to submit them. And if they have good technique that they're doing to try to get their guard back, I'll let them have their guard back and then I'll pass it right away. And then by the second or third, fourth time that I do that, now all of a sudden the submission's easy because I can feel them break. All right. So, and, and it's just because I'm mentally playing the game of 
I know what to do from this position. I know what to do from that position. And I'm just, my mind just switches to that. And I'm staying focused on what it is that I need to do from every position. And I'm not bringing in my feelings and ego into it. Right. And so people will say to me stuff like, I'm afraid to try headlocking somebody like it because in practice, they'll even say this. I'm afraid of trying to headlock somebody because they're going to take my back. And I say like, so what? If they take your back, what, from, from a standing position or, or from the ground, like if you end up on the ground, learn how to get out of that. If they're already walking behind you, they've already got your back. So, you know, what you're going to let them pick you up and slam you in the air and get into a worse position. So their arms right there, you know, key lock their arm. All of a sudden, they'll start thinking twice about being there. You know, that happens to me in practice. There's one uh, brown belt that... If I hardly ever roll with him. And every time I do, I forget that if I'm behind him and my arms are, you know, around his waist or whatever, he'll reach over the, the elbow and key lock, you know, key lock my arm and it's effective. And so if somebody takes your, you know, your back from there, well, go ahead. Now see what happens. You know, okay, that doesn't work. Granby, that doesn't work. Break their hands apart, stand and, and face them. But just focus on what it is that you need to do, not what they got on you. Because now what you're doing is, is that you're putting your mind into this weird thing like they're winning, they're winning, they're winning. And if you're in practice and you're thinking about people winning all the time, you're really setting yourself up for failure, man. Um, if you go to a competition, you should be thinking about you know, doing well. But you'll do better in competition if you just focus on what it is that you need to be doing when you're out there, not the outcome of what happens, right? So when I used to coach – uh, high school wrestling on the regular. Now I just mostly do private lessons and stuff. But when I was doing it on the regular, you know, going every single day, one of the guys, my favorite uh, kid to coach, who was multiple time state champion in freestyle and then of uh, uh, high school, and uh, and he went to college on a wrestling scholarship. But when I was first working with him, when he was like fifteen, he actually had that mindset. Like he would say to me in the middle of the match, like I don't want to be here and stuff. And I would be like, stop worrying about the outcome. Just go do what you need to do. We'll talk about it afterwards. And it was like, wait a minute, because I kind of validated him in terms of being like, I didn't just completely shut it down. But I'm like, I know what that feels like. Just feel, focus on what you need to focus on out there. And then, you know, you need you, you, because this was like a state qualifier in order to and he ended up winning the state title. So he was breaking down mentally because he was so worried. If I lose this match, I don't get to go to state. And it's like, uh, because this in freestyle, that's part of the, the way it works. And it's like, dude, you're not going to go to state if you're worried about the outcome, you know, right now you need to just focus on getting takedowns. Like that's all you need to be focusing on. And if he takes you down, you need to be focusing on not getting turned, stand back up, worry about getting the takedown. And so mentally, cause he was very physically gifted and, and he had good technique. It was the mental part that he needed more work with. And once he got to the part where he, uh, with that point to where he, this stuff wasn't bothering him so much. He was so calm and collected out there. He wasted hardly any energy and people walked into stuff that he had all the time because he was calmer and he could see it, right? It's like he, he used to shuck people by. And if they shuck people by, if they went too far, you know, he took their back. If they tried to go the other way, he could trip them, take them to their own back. And he smoked people that way, want to stay title that way. And it was all because he mentally got over the fact of what the score was. A lot of people, they end up that way. And then in the state finals, they freak out, right? Because it's like, oh, this counts, this counts. And it's like, yeah, of course it counts, but it it's not going to go the way that you want if you're constantly judging yourself on the mat. You can't judge yourself on the mat. You just have to look at what's he, what's what position are we in? What do I do from this position? Every single time, once you get into those positions, if your mind just goes to switch then you're 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 tricking yourself into not letting the ego part, the emotional part that says like uh, yourself, like this is my self worth part in here. I'm losing. Like yes, you can have a sense of urgency, but the urgency is to just be like, I need to get to these different positions so that I can score. Not like, oh man, he's beating me up, right? And so uh, use practice for practice. Let people get on your back if you're afraid of of people taking your back. Right. If you're so afraid of being in somebody's guard, get in people's full guard. If you're so afraid of having people on your back, put them on your back. Hell, give them give them great position on your back because uh, then now you have to learn how to get out of there. Right. And after a while, what will happen is, is that you'll start believing in the techniques that work and your mind will just go to that thing. And then when something presents itself 
you'll see it for what it is and just work with it. Not like, oh, oh, that's not where I wanted to be. Oh, it would have been so great if it worked like this. Because I definitely suffered from that in high school when I got super good and I was just smoking everybody. I used to get on myself about that takedown didn't look as pretty. Like I really wanted to lift him and sweep his foot out. And I wanted to have like this spectacular display. And it was because I was worried so much about people watching me now because I was trying to get recruited at that time. And it was like, and and then the match that I got recruited at to wrestle D1, I didn't know that there was a D1 scout there, which actually, and I went and smoked people. I only got one point scored on me in that entire tournament. And it was because I was just doing my thing. I was in a different state. I, I went up, I traveled to New York to wrestle in this tournament and I was just doing my thing, man. And I was there all alone. Nobody knew who I was, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, that's when I did my best when I thought, nobody's watching. You know what I mean? I'm just doing this for me. So don't think about people watching. Don't be looking over at your coach all the time. Is he watching me? Did you see that move coach? Like, come on, man. <laughs> you know, like that's all, that's all ego. You know, you got to let that go. Like you're there to learn positional control so that it matters against somebody who's really good. Right. Cause they're just not going to let you out and they don't care how you feel about it. Right. So uh, I hope that this, I hope you can get something from this. I hope that this helps, you know, to, cause you can learn and I'm not, I'm not just telling you just make it stop. I mean, I'm a psychologist. I know how this stuff works. You, what I'm telling you to do is essentially distract those negative thoughts from happening by just focusing on the position and what it is that you need to do in that position, not how it makes you feel. Okay. So, uh, let me know if this helps you at all. Um, if you feel confident and comfortable, maybe if you don't feel comfortable, it's even better, uh, leaving comments, talking about when this has happened to you and where you are in that, because just like I tell my students in the classroom, when they ask a question, <clears throat> they'll ask a question. If the answer is no, and I'll be like, no, that's not right. You can see them sometimes like, oh, and when I see that happen, I say, no, no, you asked the question that everybody else had. They just didn't have the guts to ask it and you're helping them. And so that's the truth. OK, if you're you aren't helping yourself, if you hold everything in and don't share it, you're helping yourself when you acknowledge that you have these problems, too. Everybody does. And then you just learn how to deal with them. And what I'm telling you to do is, is that, and this is from a psychological point of view. OK, this is what I do for a living. Right. Is, is that you I'm in the Department of Psychology. I'm a neuroscientist who studies sensory stuff, but experience and how you perceive the world. Right. And so you can learn how to perceive things differently because you could perceive like, oh, we're in a fight. This is terrible. Or you can perceive it as, okay, this is a cool uh, way of learning how to deal with things in a fighting situation. And I have uh, certain techniques that I can use to defend myself. Completely different mindsets, but we're still doing the same thing, right? So um, if this helps you, let me know. If you think that you need to work on any of these things, share it. And, um, you know, we want a community where we can talk about these things and, and, and learn from each other. So uh, please like and subscribe if you like the content, share it with other people too. And until next time, thanks for watching.